Hello and welcome to a quick introduction to Visure's features and capabilities when it comes to pro procurements and um, tender management. So um, for those of you who are not familiar with Visure requirements, it's I'm here in the uh, desktop client version 7. And well, in the middle of my screen, I have the list of all of the different specifications, all of the different documents uh, that I'm centralizing in Visure. Because one of the ideas of using such a platform as Visure is to centralize many different elements of one project. So you see I have some standards, I have different documents for my requirements, uh, different test protocols, test results, procurement suppliers, answers, uh, defects, risks, sprints, tasks, so for software development down here. Uh, so I have many different elements simply because I want to be able to relate all of those elements together and have a traceability flow within my whole project. And as I was just mentioning, those are individual elements, so uh, documents, sorry, so you can open them and well, then you'll be able to access their content. So I've just opened here my RFI RFP, so request for information, request for proposal. Uh, and I'm here looking at the requirements that I'm about to submit for procurement. So before submitting those requirements for procurement, one thing that I will probably want to do uh, will be to review them, to make sure that what I'm submitting to my potential suppliers uh, is what I want to submit. So this whole review process, there's several ways that we can do it in Visure. One way that I personally like is to use an attribute set as, such as the status. So one thing to keep in mind is that all attributes in Visure are customizable. So you can have a, another kind of status than I do. You can have a priority attribute. You can have an assignee attribute. I have an importance attribute here that I just use to indicate to my suppliers whether the requirement is uh, important or not, typically. Uh, I could also have an expected cost, expected benefit attribute. So you could have uh, different attributes. It's absolutely customizable. Now let's focus a little bit on the status because this is the attribute I will be using for approving my requirements before submitting them. And uh, what is interesting about attributes, so uh, the first thing, as I just mentioned, is the fact that you can create as many as you need, but you can also organize workflows um, that will basically make conditions on who uh, can perform what transition and more generally, what transitions can be performed. So you see that it will be impossible to transition an um, a requirement directly from new up to approved straight from new to reject is also something that is not possible. Um, and then from new to reviewed, yes, it is possible to make this transition, but only the authorized user groups will be able to make it. So in that case, that would be only my requirement and risk engineers. Typically what something we, we usually see is the final decision from reviewed to approved is something that uh, only project managers are entitled to make. Um, again, this is only an example workflow, so it's pretty simple and you could have something very different with different values, different transitions and all that. Uh, I just wanted to stress quickly um, how Visual can help you review your requirements and more generally manage your requirements uh, before even submit, submitting them for um, the, the procurement. Another thing that we would potentially do before uh, submitting the requirements to, to procurement, uh, actually we would do it during the creation of our requirements, uh, is to make sure that they're of high quality. And we have different modules in Visual that help you um, improve the quality overall of your requirements and your specifications. Uh, I'm thinking about the quality analyzer module we have, which will give a feedback on um, what should be, I mean, it will, it will give suggestions on what should be changed to improve the quality of your requirements. I'm also thinking about the add from template that will just drastically improve the coherence and the consistency you have in your specifications because, uh, well, requirements will be created from a template. Uh, here we have set up the ears template. So this is a guideline on how to write uh, good quality um, requirements with good syntax. So, well, uh, those are little tips that Visual offer to uh, you know, improve overall the, the quality of your requirements. Uh, but let's let's just assume that all of our requirements are of good quality. They have been approved. They're reviewed, so they are basically ready to be uh, sent to our potential suppliers to collect answers. So to submit our requirements uh, to a supplier, let's say we want to submit our requirements to supplier D. What we will do is come here, use this um, specific plugin, select the document that we want to submit. So in that case, that would be RFI RFP, uh, give it a name. So in my example, 
I want to uh, submit it to supplier D as we said, so I'll just be adding the letter D like this uh, and selecting in the access partition drop down supplier D. Uh, when I select supplier D here, I'm basically making sure that only supplier D will have access to the answers of supplier D, which makes sense, but um, it's bas it basically means two things. Firstly, supplier D will be able to give his answer and his answers will be private. That means only him, like supplier D and us project managers will have access to it, not the other uh, bidders. And that also means that supplier D will not have access to anything outside of this access partition. So that would be the other, uh, supply, uh, other supplier's answers. And when I click on OK, I'm basically creating copies of all our original requirements um, and creating a brand new document that supplier D will have access to uh, and will be able to, you know, fill his answers in. So it's super important that I'm not giving our suppliers directly the original requirements, but only copies. And this plugin is more than a simple copy and paste because it also creates traceability links between the original elements and the copied elements. Um, so that we maintain traceability and we will, we're just able to, you know, track the answers from the original requirements. So here it created a new uh, document. This is the name we've just created together. And when you open it, we find all of our uh, requirements, just like we were looking at them before. Supplier D has access to the importance and also now access to a new, new attribute that is called fulfillment, uh, which simply means that, you know, you can come here. So you firstly would have to Oh, sorry, check out the element and then come here, click on fully, for example, if you think that uh, you can fulfill this requirement fully. So that would be assuming that supplier D is nice enough to install Visual LM desktop on his computer and then come here to fill um, his answers. More realistically, um, probably supplier D will not have Visual desktop installed on his computer. So uh, we have him covered. He can just connect to Visual through the web. So we have Visual offering, which um, supplier D will be able to use to connect to Visual and fill his answers. So I actually created the user Mr. D, uh, as you've seen that I'm using to connect. And right now when I'm connected um, from supplier D, I mean, with Mr. D user, you see that the only document I have access to is actually this one. Uh, this is just a parent containing this child document. So the only document that I have access to is this one. Uh, those are the requirements that were created only for me, only for supplier D. So I can calmly type my answers uh, without worrying about modifying the original elements because again, those are only copies. So I will just navigate to the list view. Uh, so that I can have something looking more like an Excel spreadsheet. I can decide what columns I want to have. So uh, let's go with the fulfillment. I'll also include in my view the importance because I want to, oh, sorry for the typo. Um, I want to know what are the, um, what is considered important for the RFI. And I will also of course add the description because right now it's not in the list. Okay, perfect. So once you have your column, you can just resize them. Uh, let's put the code first. Well, just for now, reduce this one to the maximum, make the description much wider. And okay, there we go. We have something looking already a lot better. Uh, and now we have all of the requirements that we need to answer and we can just take the line one by one and fulfill, I mean, give a value for the fulfillment. So typically we can come to this element, say we fill it fully, come to this element. We firstly have to check it out. Uh, and then say this one, we fulfill it. Uh, we don't fulfill it at all. The next one will fulfill it partially only. Um, and so like this, we can just go through the whole, um, you know, analysis of what are the requirements. And we can also leave comments. If at some point I want to say uh, that this, um, I fulfill it partially, I can just come here, leave a comment and say, uh, it depends what I, what, easy to uh, use means to be clear. So I can just say, okay, I fulfill it partially, but it depends what easy to use means. By the way, here we have a perfect example of um, confusions that are created by low quality requirements, hence the importance of um, having good quality requirements in the first place. So right here, supplier D could connect to Visual and directly type in 
um, his answers to say, okay, I'm fulfilling, uh, here are my answers, my comments, and so on. And then as a project manager, uh, still from here, those are live documents, so you can just hit that refresh button, and we have the answers of supplier D uh, live updated. Another way that we could ask supplier D for his answers uh, would be to actually uh, export this to an Excel spreadsheet and then send the Excel spreadsheet to supplier D, have him answering um, in Excel and then import the results back, the answers back into Visual. So both ways are valid. You know, you can ask your supplier to fill directly uh, his answers with Visual Web or you can just send him an Excel spreadsheet or Word document and then import his answers as well. Once you have all of the answers, uh, one thing you can do that is very interesting is go to the views uh, and create a view using the traceability tree uh, view type that I think I have, I probably is this one, yes. So you see here, I have a view, I'm displaying in red because uh, basically to keep track of what I'm looking at, I just decided to add some color. So everything you see written in red here is an original requirement. So case color, typically this is an original requirement. This is an original requirement as well. So everything we see here are original requirements. Then as you expand them, you will have access to the answers that we received from our um, suppliers. And I will actually just put this column right here. You can have a very easy look like um, supplier A decided to fulfill fully this requirement, supplier B also, supplier C just ignored this one, and then supplier D um, said that no, we're not, we're not fulfilling this requirement. And if you expand everything like this, you can have a very quick overview of, um, you know, who is fulfilling what and where suppliers decided to answer yes or no. Uh, you just have a quick overview. You also have access to the comments. So here we see that Mr. D said that they're only partially um, fulfilling this requirement because, well, it depends what easy to use means. So like this, you can just compare all of the answers one after the other, knowing that, of course, only you as a project manager has access to this. Supplier D will, of course, not see the answers uh, coming from other other beaters. That's exactly what we were looking at here. You see that you, you can have access only to your own um, specific answers. So you can have a good comparison on, um, well, what the suppliers answered. Another way that you can have this overview is using a dashboard. You can configure dashboards in Visual. Typically, I have one here uh, that is just showing for the different suppliers. So here I just named them one, two, and three instead of A, B, C, and D, but those are the same suppliers. Uh, we can very quickly analyze how, how much, I mean, how fulfilling they are. Um, so here we see that 15% uh, of our requirements, supplier one is fulfilling fully, four requirements only partially, and then three requirements they're not fulfilling at all. Um, supplier two is doing a bit of a better job and supplier three is pretty similar to supplier two. So uh, we can have a very you know quick overview here of uh, who is doing the best at fulfilling our requirements thanks to a dashboard. 